Hello everyone and welcome to this quick tutorial on grading raw Cinema GNG files in DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started right away. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve and as you can see we have some footage and this shot of these guys walking along to look at this tree and we need to grade it because as you can see it's very flat. It's been recorded on the DJI X5R camera and was mounted to the DJI S1000 and we use that to create a lovely dolly move here to follow the scientists as they go over to look at the base of the tree. Now as I say, it we recorded in uh, a raw format, so what happens when you put it into Resolve and you get your project set up right, you'll end up with an image that looks a little bit like this. And it tends to be a little bit flat, a little bit underexposed, so we need to bring some life into it. So, once we've trimmed our clips in the Edit tab, it's time to move to the Color tab in DaVinci Resolve, and we're just going to move across right now into that tab. So. Once you're here, you just get a quick familiar overview of the interface. So you've got the viewer, the node tree, scopes, and you have curves and all sorts of things down here. And then you've got your familiar color wheels. If you've been ever using any grading software uh, in Premiere or Final Cut, you might be familiar with these color wheels. Now, the way that we do grading in DaVinci Resolve is we use the node structure. And for those of you not familiar with nodes, treat nodes as layers and you kind of get the same idea. And what we want to try and do is put each different grade, each different adjustment that we're going to do, ideally put it into a new node. And that way you can keep track of your whole grade. You can very easily revisit certain elements, adjust them and keep track of exactly what's going on on each section of your grade, turn them off, try them with other things. And as I say, it's just a very neat way of working. So what we want to try and do initially is use this to boost our overall image exposure. So we tend to work with exposure first. And to do that, we're going to, as I say, if you haven't got a node there already, add a serial node. Uh, in this instance, we're just going to right click, change the label, call it exposure, because that is what we're going to do with this node first. So we're looking to adjust the exposure of this node. And to do that, you can use either your curves, the custom curve, which is you'll see by default, you can either use that or you can use the wheels. Again, neither is um, right or wrong necessarily, but it's normally um, the wheels that I tend to prefer for some things. And if I'm doing things, uh, other certain scenarios, it's sometimes nice to use the curve. So it's, it's, it's very much a uh, horses for courses. Use the one that you like, get to familiar with it, and then use that one. But um, in this instance, we're going to actually use the wheels. So initially, I'm just going to adjust the offset of this clip, and we're just going to bring it up, and that will lift the overall exposure of the entire image. You'll actually see this whole curve on the uh, scope over here just moved up, the whole trace just moved up slightly. So that's good. That's got us to a kind of a nice starting point. In fact, we might just drop it down a tiny bit. Uh, then we're going to use the lift control to affect the shadows, and we're just going to drag that down, and that's going to start making them a little darker. There we go. We don't want to kind of go too far just yet. And we're going to go to the gain next. So we'll go to the highlights and you can see there's some very high elements in here in the trace. And actually if we brighten that up a little bit, you might be able to see them even better. There we go. So you can see there's some little high elements there. And those high elements are going to be these spots in the trees, in between the trees rather, where the sky is showing through. Now, it was a particular grey day, so there wasn't, there wasn't particularly many details or highlights in the clouds. So we're not overly worried if they clip, but we just want to keep an eye on them. And we're just going to move this through until we find a point where we think we're the image is sort of suitably bright enough. The whites are where they should be and bright, and that looks about right to me. As a result of moving the whole trace up, we have to bring the shadows down a bit to create some contrast, move a bit too far there. And, oh, definitely too far there. There we go. And let's find a midpoint that we're kind of happy with. Maybe about there. So that's our initial exposure change. and. You'll see we've done quite a lot to the exposure there. So we're going to just park that for now. We're going to bring up a new serial node and we're going to change the label for this and we're going to call it Saturation. So for those of you, again, this is for people very much who've done never done any grading before. For those of you who have done some grading, I apologize. This will be a little bit of a basic tutorial in that respect, but hopefully you'll pick up something from it anyway. So saturation, clearly we're going to boost the color. So we're going to go to the number one tab at the bottom here, scroll along to saturation and simply change 
saturation to boost it. And again, let's say I'm going to go quite heavy on this one and put it about there. So in essence, by boosting the saturation, we've also boosted the contrast a little bit. We might have to go back to the exposure. We might just change the lift controls ever so slightly just to make sure so we're not kind of darkening things up too much or stretching out that trace over here too much that we don't want to. Where we are right here, that looks okay. I'm just going to maybe lift these mid-tones a little bit. And again, don't let anybody tell you that there's a right or wrong way to view an image, if that makes sense. So there's no, it's very subjective. So you only you know what your project's for, only you know where it's going to. So grade obviously your project to taste. And you know, if you're going for a particular style where it, there's more color, more saturation, then pump that saturation in if you don't dial it back. Either way, you know, it's not going to be wrong because it is very creative, a very subjective thing. So that's the exposure and that's the saturation added and that for the most part is pretty much where we need to get the grade one thing i might add is a serial note here and we're going to change that label and we're going to call this one shadows and what we're going to do with this is you guessed it move the shadows so we're just going to adjust the shadows up slightly and you can see that's just affecting that part of the image and we're going to just allow a little bit more detail in those darker areas to kind of creep through and then another node, change the label, we're going to call this highlights. And then we're just going to check our highlights using this option down here. And incidentally, everybody, if you're using these nodes the way we're showing you here, what's great about this is you can actually stack multiple sort of secondary color corrections and things on top of one another. So for example, if for example, the saturation wasn't good enough in this node and you'd already gone all the way to 100 on this slider, it won't let you go any further past. So the best way around that is to create another node, call it saturation two, pump the saturation up and keep going until you're satisfied that you've got the right amount of saturation in your image. Now, back to the highlights, we're just we're not, not again, there's not a lot of highlights here that we've clipped. So this is where you'd be trying to save some of those highlights. We haven't really clipped many. So we don't need to do a whole load of work here. But just for the sake of showing you, that's maybe where we are. Uh, and again, I think the image could do with a little bit of a contrast improvement. So we're just going to darken some of those images up a little bit, some of that image up a little bit more. And in all, yeah, there we go. I'm fairly happy with where we are. The little sort of stop sign up here, turn that off and it bypasses the grade. You can see how far we've come. So there's the ungraded version, the flat version, which for most situations, you might actually be handing that flat version onto an editor um, yourself. But if you're going to grade it yourself, then obviously you want to be able to follow these steps using the node tree for exposure, saturation and working through in that sort of order. Another thing that you might look to do is add some sharpening. So maybe this last node, we're going to add some sharpening. And to do that, you come down to this icon here, which is the blur icon change it over from blur, which it's set to, to from default to sharpen, and then use your radius here to adjust the level of the sharpening. Obviously, you can go from very high to literally a complete blur. But again, somewhere in the middle is where you want to be. And it's just a case of dialing it back to taste. Obviously, bear in mind that adding sharpness can also add a little bit of noise to the image at times as well, um, as can sort of overdoing any of the, the sort of particular adjustments. So if you overdo anything, you're going to start increasing a little bit of noise and start the image will start falling apart, particularly if you're using a lower quality 8-bit codec, uh, then that, that's unfortunately something that's going to happen. So just bear that in mind. A lot of the time, it's t dialing into taste and it's about just balancing everything out and not overdoing one thing or another unless you're going for a particularly stylistic thing. So there we go. We've completed our grade. We've got all of the nodes ready to go. And hopefully you've now got an image which is looking a little bit better than when it was the original flat image that we saw when we started working with it. And hopefully you've got something now that suits your project. Obviously there's a lot more involvement in the grading process that we can do. And do join us in a future tutorial where we'll be looking at how power windows and qualifiers can be used to help us manipulate the image and select certain parts of it for enhancement or further focus as required. Um, so please do, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, a thumbs up will be smashing from you all. And if you want to subscribe, then you'll be obviously the first to know about new content as and when it's released. Thank you again for watching. 
and we will see you in the next video. Bye for now.